Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach, and welcome to my vlog, where I highlight my creative journey, as well as life in general, and extract the various things that I've learned along the way, and highlight the, the skills and the, the mindset and so forth, the tactics that I've been applying in certain situations. So, one of the things like that, like when I compare my last week to the week before, a big thing is that this this past week was really about just kind of con keeping things moving, moving the rock up the hill, so to speak. Because the week before that, I had completed the poster for my movie, and that was a very real, tangible end result. And you can look at that and be like, oh, I feel very accomplished, right? Whereas last week, you know, that nothing like quote unquote came of it. It just, it just got me to the next phase of things. Uh, but certainly, certainly not enough where I could feel like, oh, I, 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 I've done it right. Or where I could show something off. Meaning, for example, I am working on what I hope to be my second film. So I'm, I'm writing the script. Now, I'm not even right now writing the script. I'm actually working on the outline. But, and, you know, by no means, I've worked on the outline last week, but I didn't finish the outline. Uh, the other kind of component is, you know, uh, I've started writing the how-to book based on my experience of making my movie. And that's, you know, it's that's not complete. So, you know, one of the aspects that you have to kind of just come to grips with, it's that age-old thing, you've got to really enjoy the journey because you're not always gonna have weeks. Heck, you might not even have months where, where you have like this quote unquote accomplishment. You really, you know, have small tangible things and you just kind of gotta keep the ball moving. The other aspect is in order to combat that, give yourself uh, mini goals, right? So it's like if you are training for a marathon, well, don't only pat yourself on the back if you run the 26 or so miles, right? Instead, if you, let's say, you know, you never run it, run in your life and you run all of a sudden 10 blocks one day, well, you know, view that as an accomplishment. And so it's always best to break down long-term projects into more bite-sized, uh, comprehensible, if you will, pieces, because then, you know, you can have a sense of that. And the other thing I think, especially now in quarantine, too many of us are focused on the idea of productivity and so forth and just having something to uh, always show for it. And I think, you know, I think, I think we have the ability to step back and just kind of enjoy life in general. Like, I think there's, there's a way to move forward, but you also need that rest. And in fact, that rest is very integral to, to having productivity. Uh, Ryan Holiday's Stillness is the Key, he points to uh, Winston Churchill kind of being burnt out for a little bit and he took some time off and because he essentially was outed out of the government. Now this was before he became the prime minister of England and so forth in World War II. And so, you know, it's a very real thing that by him having that time, it actually, it allowed him to be so much better as a prime minister because he wasn't burnt out. He had a chance to kind of recharge and then when he was fully necessary to step in and, and, and you know, he, he did what he did and kind of the rest is history. We all, you know, how many people quote Winston Churchill and so forth. And there's plenty of other examples of this within that book, but just in life in general, if you kind of look at it, where you need that ability to step back and really refocus. And in fact, one of the things that I was thinking about um, in terms of what, what allowed me to move so quickly in terms of uh, my movie Idol, my first movie, was the fact that I didn't have a lot of projects going on. And that was a good thing. I think too many of us have so many irons in the fire that it doesn't allow us that space to really step back and breathe. I think uh, by always being go, 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 we never have that moment to just let our minds rest and, and uh, let something come to us. You know, the, um, the age old story of like the apple falling down and kind of, you know, figuring out gravity and so forth. Like that was, you know, it's not like, um, you don't go out and seek that of like, let me study apples. Like you're just kind of observant of the world. Right. And so if you're always kind of go, go, go and don't allow yourself the time to really rest, then, then 
then you won't be able to observe things because you're only focused very singularly on, on your to-do list. And so especially now during quarantine, you know, I think uh, a form of being productive is allowing your, yourself to be able to kind of just relax as well. Um, I really do. But um, so let's get let's get a little concrete in terms of uh, some tactics that I've been applying to certain things. So so I've been wanting to write a how to book based on my experience of my film in the vein of Rob Rodriguez's Rebel Without a Crew. So I'm certainly not the first one to do this, but I really want to kind of make it inspirational, but as well as tactical. And I was starting to do it like I originally, when I wrote my novel, you know, sit at a computer, type it out. And, you know, I was getting to a place where it's just kind of slow and whatever else. And so I thought, well, let me, let me instead do a tactic where I basically just recount stories, no different than kind of what I'm doing right here, right now, except, you know, that would then be taken and transcribed. And it would then essentially, you know, that would be the text. And obviously uh, it's uh, colloquial. So, and there would be a lot of pauses and stutters and repetition. So I would, you know, it's not like it would be the final thing, uh, but it would at least provide me like ideally 60% of the text and I could revise it. So that's what I've been doing for a little bit last week is I was just, you know, essentially literally doing this. Uh, but for, you know, myself, essentially. And, you know, I did that. I uploaded to uh, through a service called Rev. And, um, you know, I just did like an automatic transcription. I didn't do like the human transcription of it because I know I'll have to edit it and so forth. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, right now, that's kind of the direction I'm going in. It feels, I always like to have someone to bounce off of, especially for that type of thing. But, um but I think I think it's still going to make it easier than me just sitting at a computer and typing. Um, so I'm excited by that because um, at the end of the day, writing is really all about revision. And in fact, I want to do an episode about this in the future about how, you know, when you I, I think we right now live in such a like kind of just film, put something out there type of media uh, culture that sometimes we don't really process the way we think and what we actually think. And but the process of writing for me um, and having to revise, it does hone your thinking uh, from a critical standpoint. And I think, I think that's an art that s generally is being lost, but the people that focus on it are, are obviously good at it. And uh, can, you know, it's a practice, like all things in life. I am not of the belief that you're either born with something or you're not. Uh, you know, I mean, certainly you're born with height or whatever else, but in general, like most skills, if you practice, you can, you can gain them over time. I really do believe that. Um, the other kind of, uh, thing, you know, I was, one of the things that I was working on last week was a trailer for my movie. And, you know, while it's not by any means complete, I've certainly been taking steps and creating different versions and I, I kind of have been getting there. And, you know, again, it's, it's that slow process. Like I allow myself to take a step back and as I go on walks with my dogs, ideas permeate and I'm like, ooh, here's a line from this part of the movie and I can kind of link it with this and, you know, put putting some visuals over this. And one of the aspects that, um, you know, when I first like set out to make the trailer, I just asked, uh, you know, the, our producers and myself, like, what are, what are things that stand out from the movie to you? Because we definitely want to include those. And we did that. Uh, but now I really also, I think I have the lines, like the dialogue lines that are crucial for telling the quote unquote story for the trailer. But what I don't have is all the full visuals to, you know, that are most exciting. So what I did was I went back and I essentially put the movie into the editing timeline and uh, I did what's called select. So I would go through and I would chop out anything that I knew I wasn't going to use. And by using, I mean, I'm going to, you know, if it's a line of dialogue, that's really cool. Um, doesn't mean like it's definitely going in, but like, if it sounds good, let me, let me just, you know, isolate it or like a cool piece of visual. And so all in all, you know, now I've essentially taken 
uh, you know, in the movie that's like 80, 85 minutes and boiled it down to 80 minutes in terms of dialogue and visuals. And obviously, you know, that might sound like a lot and obviously for a trailer it is, but the nice part is not all the dialogue will be on screen. You know, it's going to be covered up by images and so forth. And so, you know, I think my goal is to keep paring that down. And, you know, someone asked me, will you also make like a 30 second trailer? We call that more like a TV spot. And yeah, I, I eventually want to do that as well. But first I want to get like the two and a half or so minute trailer done and then kind of focus on that other stuff. And I think this was a good aspect of it to really give myself the ability to see what I have to fully work with, especially on the visual side. Um, and I think, you know, now I'm, ideas are permeating and so forth. And while, while that might have seen like, you know, I, I think the, the theme of a lot of what I'm talking about today is like taking a step back in order to go like three steps forward, really, not even two steps, like three steps. And so uh, with the trailer, that's certainly a component of it. Certainly, one uh, going back to writing the outline for what I ideally would be my second film, you know, I'm one of those people that starts an outline, gets a lot of things going, and I'm always writing down ideas and what ifs. A lot, a lot of like my outlining is what ifs. Well, what if this happened? What if this happened? Because I, I've talked about this before, but too often an idea at its inception is very cliched. And so part of how you chisel away all the various cliches is to keep, you know, keep working at it. And that's what I do. And oftentimes, you know, I'll always start like, uh, you know, I'll come, I'll start like outlining and I'll come up with what ifs and just random ideas and try to kind of work through it. And then I'll just, you know, I get to a point, I'm like, hmm, something's off about this. Okay, let me just restart from, from the top. And even if I don't know, you know, what the next thing is, the, the, the practice of just rewriting, even if I'm literally rewriting from one to the other, you know, like copying what I've already written from an outline to a new blank page, that exercise in and of itself allows me to really go into a, a microcosm and really dissect each word and get to a place um, critically where I'm thinking about it and then all of a sudden ideas spark and then I'm, you know, all of a sudden I'm veering off into new territory that uh, overall is in the direction that I've always intended, but in terms of the specifics, you know, now it's no longer cliched. And then when I get to a point where I'm like, oh, you know what, this is, this is, um, I'm, I'm not liking where this is at right now, I start again. And, you know, that might seem wasteful, but again, it's a step back to go three steps forward. And the nice part is I'm doing this specifically in the outline phase because imagine doing that if you had, if I had already written a full script. Imagine, you know, doing this process if you're writing a novel and you're literally writing like, a, you know, a thousand words a day and then you get to like 30,000 words and you're like, um, yeah, something's off about this, right? So it's always best to, you know, slash your work essentially, uh, at times when, you know, it's, it's not that much, right? And, and so it, you know, certainly it's the Robert McKee philosophy when it comes to writing. Uh, some people call it the snowflake method, but uh, I've been certainly applying it. Anyway, in general, that's kind of overall what I've been doing. Apart from that, also just enjoying, uh, just uh, watching movies and things like that, TV shows. I've been uh, getting into devs, which is um, a TV series by Alex Garland. It's on Hulu. And that's been fun because there's various sci-fi elements in uh, the movie that I'm going for. I wouldn't say it's like an Alex Garland movie, but it certainly has kind of a little bit of those elements, Black Mirror, um, various things. And so, you know, I'm, stu I'm, I'm studying those things, not because I want to copy them, because I, I don't want to copy them, right? I want to like make sure that, that what I'm creating is something new. Anyway, um, so that's in, the, in general what I've got going on. I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Hopefully this has been helpful inspiring, whatever the case may be in some small way. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. You can comment down below or hit me up on social media. Let me know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to converse. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I would encourage you to subscribe. That way you get the various content that I'm putting out. I don't always put out blogs, but the bulk of the stuff that I put out is, is um, lessons and so forth throughout the week. I you know basically do an episode a, a day. And um, yeah, so thank you for taking the time to tune in and I hope to see you next time.